Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Bruce Bromley. He is KE7KHU. And he says, Dave, I saw your video on the Sark 100. That's this antenna analyzer right here, which you can get uh, fairly inexpensively. Notice the 100 version. The guy who invented this, it was open source. Uh, he went on to uh, create a much more complicated one uh, with a much more complicated price tag too. This is available for a reasonable amount of money. Okay. Uh, saw your video on the Sark 100 and thought it was a good budget analyzer, but saw it doesn't cover the VHF or UHF frequencies. It doesn't. I was wondering if you had any opinion and knowledge of the Mini 1300. Well, when I read this, I'd never even heard of it. I see it is getting a little closer to the price of the MFJs and the rig experts. Thanks for all your help. Okay, Bruce, um, I, we did a video earlier where we just unboxed it, okay? Um, we're going to go into more depth on it today. Uh, I got an uh, email from Mike McBride, KJ6MGV, saying you mentioned in your video that you were able to get to order the Mini 1300 off of Amazon for 100 that was a big mistake. I only saw it at over twice that, from 218 to 269. I can't afford it at that price. Can you provide the link you use to get it for only 100? Well, actually, I looked at the details. This is the Amazon slip it came at. It was listed at the time at 198. I've seen it about $20 more expensive than that. Uh, it was the upgraded Mini 1300 antenna analyzer, 0 0.1 megahertz to 1300 megahertz, that's 1.3 gigahertz, with the SMA calibration kits for 198, vector network analyzer, multi-tester, aluminum shell, HF, VHF, UHF, all bands. It was $198. Now, what happened was, and what probably led to the slip of the tongue, was I had two unused $25 Amazon gift cards, and I applied those against this. And so the grand total was 150 something with the tax, and the Colorado retail delivery fee of 27 cents. It's something, if you deliver something commercially, you have to send 27 cents to the state. I think I would get 27 pennies, tape them to a card, and send that to the state. But anyway, it would the stamp would cost more than that. But I don't deliver things in uh, Colorado. So anyway, enough on that. Before we jump into looking at this very intriguing analyzer, I'd like to pay a special thank you to Matthew Hobart, who is one of my recent new patrons on patreon.com. You too can become a patron of this channel by going to patreon.com slash ke0og and picking away that works for you. So, and if you go to that site, there's no obligation or anything like that. I like patron, Patreon because uh, it's very convenient for the patrons to keep track of what they're doing. It's a lot easier than the PayPal method and things like that. So, uh, Matthew, thank you. Okay, now what we're going to do, um, this is the cable that plugs into the back of my uh, ICOM 7300. Okay, so this goes from here to the amplifier, uh, from there through a small coupler to get a little voltage to measure SWR and then out the door to the antenna. And I have the antenna switch set on the, um, I have the antenna set on the hex beam. So that's what we're gonna be testing here. Now that's a 20 through 10. This is what you get inside a very short 
instruction book in English, um, well, ostensibly in English. Okay, you've got to do a little interpreting. And you find out that this is a remarkably versatile little instrument. Now, as it comes from the factory, it's actually set up for um, the European amateur bands. And because it's set up for those bands, the actual connector here is an N connector. Now, my station is not designed around N connectors. That's an N connector that you can see right there. Something rolled. Oh, there it is. Okay. That's an N connector. Uh, I don't have any N connectors, but I do have this adapter that I picked up at a ham fest that goes from N to NSO239. And that's called a UHF connector. Oh, and I'm touching the uh, touch screen, so it's giving me all kinds of things here. Exit. Uh, main menu. Okay, now, I have complained often that uh, the vector network analyzers, the little mini VNAs, which have the two ports, are hard to use. You've got to go down through the menus. They're very inexpensive, around $50, whereas this is closer to $200 because it has the big screen and it has an internal rechargeable battery and it has two ports on it, two USB ports. One is for charging and the other one is for taking data into software. Now, here's what I love about this. The menu. Okay, remember I said there ought to be a point and shoot on these antenna analyzers? There it is, right there. That is a single frequency SWR, or you can get a sweep across a band, uh, or a multi SWR. Uh, you can tune your antenna while you're looking at how close it gets, and then you start to get into the other things that a vector network analyzer can do. Uh, an S21, I'll show you what that means. Um, a frequency counter, uh, a crystal, uh, like a quartz crystal, you can determine the frequency. Time domain reflectometer will allow you to measure the length of cables, and you should keep a record of the length of your cables, because if there's a problem you measure with this, you might be able to find a break. A uh, little meter that will read uh, in um, microhenries or uh, capacitance and microfarads. Okay, a little DSP something, I don't know what that does. Configuration menu, uh, how you manage uh, with snapshots that you can take. A USB uh, reader, there's a USB card in here. RF generator, a signal generator, and some stuff for Whisper FT8 JT65 that I don't know about. It's got the date and time and uh, the uh, version number and everything right on the screen. Now it also comes, and this is important, these right here are how you calibrate the instrument. This is your adapter and connector to SMA. And this happens to be a female SMA. Okay, and it has over here on the side these little loads. There is one load that is open, one that is shorted, zero ohms, infinite ohms, and... and <laughs> All right, you stinky little thing, we'll get you out of there. And then we've got one that's 50 ohms. And with these three, you can calibrate the meter. Now it's got another kind of adapter here, and this is a weird one. So you have two adapters here. One goes to a female adapter, so the male comes over it and sticks the pin in there. And this is the male adapter where you've got the bolt itself 
and then the place where the female adapter, uh, the male inserts into there. In fact, you could connect the two of these together uh, like this, but you don't need to. Now, a lot of uh, the Baofeng-like uh, antennas, uh, you know, the screw-on antennas, the rubber ducts, use this connector, and a lot of the other types of antennas for uh, VHF, UHF radios use this type of connector. So you've got both. That means you can actually measure the SWR of your UHF and VHF antennas. And then you've got these three calibration devices. Why are there three for calibration? And the one that's open, why do you care if it's going to be open? Why not just leave it open? Well, the barrel here adds a little impedance. And then you've got a short, and then you've got 50 ohms. Don't lose those. And then you can go into calibrate and you go into calibration and it tells you uh, which one to do uh, to do the uh, calibration okay and you can set these things up and it's got very rudimentary instructions in here for how to use this we'll go to the main menu okay now i've put that adapter on here now i'm going to screw on to the top the cable. Now, the easiest way to get an SWR is single frequency. Okay, so you're going to put in a single frequency. In this case, it's 14 uh, megahertz. Now, you can uh, see what it is. You can also set the frequency to something different. Okay. And this gives you the resistance. Okay. Um, it says SWR 3.2. But you can do, and it gives you a little tiny uh, Smith diagram over there. Uh, let's go back to home from here. Okay. And let's pick the frequency sweep. And we're going to go into... Uh, check the band. This is 14 to 14400. Okay, so let's go ahead and press scan. Note that all the interface is with this touch screen. So you want to be careful not to zap that for any reason. Scanning is the blue line coming across here. Okay, and then the green line is the SWR. Boy, that sure looks different than it did the last time I scanned it. We're going to do a frequency, um, well, a frequency sweep here. Um, okay, and we're going to do 7 megahertz, and let's see what we get here. Hopefully, we'll be getting a, a real reading. Okay, so here's the SWR curve. And it starts at 7 megahertz at 1.5. At about 7.1 megahertz, it's down to 1.4 or so. And it comes over here and stays under 2 to 1 across the entire band, which I would expect for 40 meter vertical. Okay, now you will note that this shows half the band as being light. This is the ham band. Well, that's actually the European ham band. The American ham band stands, extends all the way over to 7300. But you can see that it comes across here perfectly. Let's retune this now for 20. So we'll, whoops. Okay, so actually, what I want to tune is, is 30 meters. So we're going to tune 30 meters. We're going to go up and touch that. And we're going to pick the 30 meter band. Okay. And this will be. Okay. No, that's not what I want. I want the 30 meter band. Okay. And we're going to push on okay. 
And now we'll push on scan. And let's see what we get out of this. That is the, means it's scanning the frequencies. And now here's the result. We have a 1.5 to 1 coming down to below that. In other words, perfect across the entire band. Now the band shown here is actually the band. Okay, the 100 kilohertz band. Let's go to 20. And we'll switch this to 20 meters. Okay, and we want to go from that frequency up 400 in the scan. And you can put in any number you want here. And you can say how much above or below the reference frequency you want scanned. So let's just hit OK here. And then we'll just hit scan right here. Now this thing does have a rechargeable battery in it, which is very nice. You can take this in the field. Okay, here's the 20 meter band. It starts out at about 1.3 to 1 and stays under 1.5 to 1 across the entire band. That's excellent. Note that it ends here at 14,350. That is the edge of the American and the European uh, ham band. Now I'm going to take this all the way up to 10 because 10, uh, 10 is, uh, whoops, 28,500. Okay, so let's, again, we are just touch that, and we're going to go to 10 meters plus 2 megahertz, it says. The band is actually 1.7 megahertz wide. It's our widest HF band. Okay, and so now we do scan. This is again the step IR, big IR. Okay, and there we go. We've got in the part of the band that people use, uh, most of the single side band, the FT8 and stuff is down in this region. But now the way the thing is actually built, if I go up in frequency, it will slightly shorten the antenna. But even if I don't, it's under three to one. Um, the people at Step IR have asked me not to say to use a tuner uh, with this, but in fact, uh, a vertical antenna has an impedance of about 30 ohms, and so you won't get down to one to one unless you use the tuner in your radio. Uh, and it's this is actually fine across the band, but what um, I've never actually properly fully set up the step by R because it will measure the frequency from the radio. It gets a, a, a word across digitally and it will adjust the length of the antenna as you go across the band for the best SWR. Okay, so what we have seen, and I want to go over this just a little bit more. We have a true point and shoot mode where we can press just SWR and you put in a frequency or SWR scan it'll give you the whole band. There are multi SWR things that you can do. Um, oh I don't have that set up. Let's just go home. Okay and a uh, <clears throat> capability of tuning it. Now, this is um, there's a little tone that comes out. Let's go down to 20 meters and watch this thing as it shortens the, or uh, extends the antenna to um, 1400. You'll note that you're getting down to the point here where 1.34 is how good you get. So you can actually use this, and I don't know if you can hear that tone, it's very quiet, but it changes down lower as the SWR goes lower. That could be useful under some circumstances, okay? So, we'll just go home from that. Those are the ones that will do that. 
Now you've got fine frequency, it's a frequency counter, and you can read the instructions on that. Um, now, I want to talk about this S21 thing. We use the S parameter S11 to measure that. Now the S11 parameter is actually the reflection coefficient. It's not SWR. You have to compute SWR from the reflection coefficient. But it talks in the manual here, and I'm going to go out just a little bit so we can see the manual. Move this out of the way. It tells you what all the ports are. It's got nice pictures in there, telling you what everything is, but not not necessarily very much around it. Okay. <coughs> Here it's possible to see on the multi SWR if you set it up right you can see all the bands of interest that your antenna will do and you'll get an SWR profile across all the bands. In this one here, the red means that we saw earlier means bad SWR and as it moves over here it's better and better. Okay. Now the gain. Okay now this talks about putting a little cable between there and there <clears throat> so you can calibrate like that, okay? And then what you do if you have a two-port filter, uh, like it's got um, capacitors and inductors in there and it's designed to filter out, say, above a certain frequency or so, this will put out a signal into here and then you can see the result and you can sort of see the result that will show up um, there. And it tells you where, in this case, it's a notch filter. And you can tell where the notch is right there. Okay, the fine frequency uh, still works. Okay, it's designed apparently for hams. Uh, quartz time domain reflectometer, which is really handy if you're trying to locate a break in a coax and it's underground or somewhere difficult to get to. Um, inductance, capacitance, and uh, I don't know what this DSP is. Have to do some time, uh, take some time to look at that. Now in the configuration you can see I've set the date and time. Uh, you can manage snapshots. Uh, there is a card in this. I'm going to, whoops, I want to leave the N connector on and take off just the, okay, and uh, you can see right here down in there, you'll need a little tool to punch on it uh, to get the, the little miniature uh, SD card out. And that's the card you will use for uh, taking snapshots out if you don't connect it to the computer. Now there's two USB ports and they're different. Okay, there's that one and then there is that one right there. That is not a USB-C, it's one of the uh, mini ports. And then you can get the software for this. Now the only other thing I wanted to be sure to mention on this was that this, let's get it out of a, okay, get it back to that main menu. Um, the edges on this thing, it might be 3D printed in metal, but somebody needed to take and buffer this edge down. It is quite sharp. The corners are quite sharp. And I can see you really easily cutting yourself on one of these things. Now it looks like the back comes off. You screw there, 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 and also on the other sides. But it's designed to be pretty tight electronically so you don't get signal um, leakage into the other parts. So this is HF, VHF, UHF, antenna, analyzer, um, 
<laughs> I don't know who laid out the type for this, but they need a little less kerning between the L and the Y there. Okay, 0 0.1 to 1300 megahertz. Okay, now we, the measurements that I, now the measurements that I got on this match beautifully with those of other analyzers. And I'm really very pleased with this little thing. Now it's 200 bucks, maybe a little bit more. That is on the order of half. Let's just take a look online here. Okay, we're gonna go to mfjenterprises.com uh, and we're going to look for the MFJ two five nine mfj 259 uh, d okay here it is right here this is the equivalent of what i have now but look at the price 349 okay now if we look up uh under antenna analyzers here antenna analyzers Okay, they've got a whole bunch of them, and they go up in price. Here's one with the screen on it, okay? 429 Now let's go back to Amazon and look for the uh, mini M-I-N-I-1300 antenna analyzer, okay? And we've got them here. Uh, here's somebody who has it for 165 and prime delivery there. Okay. Um, the upgraded one. Let's, let's find out which one I got. I'm just going to go into my um, orders and try to go into my orders, your orders. Okay. They keep changing their interface. Drives me nuts. I got some high voltage capacitors so I could uh, test some antenna theories. I got some headphones recently updated. Uh, let's look and see. Here we go. Uh, the upgraded mini. This is the one I got. 218. It was 199 then. So it's gone up 20 bucks. Okay. This is half the price of the equivalent MFJ. Now, is this affordable? Well, a VNA is a lot more affordable, but you're going to find that this is a very nice little analyzer. This is actually a vector network analyzer, and so you can do the kinds of things that you do with the VNA. Will it do a Smith chart? Yes. Will it do all the other fancy plots? Yes. But it's got a point and shoot mode. And this is what I really like about this. Even though it's a very sophisticated instrument, it has a point and shoot mode. You punch that button and you've got a way to graph your SWR across an entire band. Okay, or across multiple bands or just take the SWR at a single frequency. This makes this valuable for those who have not worked with these things before or who have played with one of those very complex and very sophisticated uh, $50 um, nano VNAs and can't figure it out, this you can figure out. Point, shoot, you've got it, okay? You can't do that with the nano VNA. Uh, maybe someday somebody there will take pity on the... 99.9% .9 of the population that does not understand Linux or how Linux programmers think. I am not a Linux programmer. I played with it a little tiny bit enough to know that it's so different from my electrical engineering background that it's not going to work for me. So this would be one that I would suggest for beginners if you can get hold of the SARC uh, 100 antenna analyzer. This one I think has a steel case. And uh, those are nice. This one I find to be satisfyingly accurate. 
the Sark II, but this one, very nice point and shoot type of a meter. Do I recommend it? Yeah, I really do. Now, I paid for this with channel funds, okay? So there's no manufacturer breathing down my neck wanting to see what the video looks like. Not that I would let a manufacturer do that anyway. But paid for this with channel funds, and I think this is going to become part of my permanent collection because it is so easy to use. Okay? So there you have it. A cool antenna analyzer. Now, understand, of course, the usual caveat that what I'm measuring here is the coax, the link through the amplifier, the uh, link out to the lightning arrester, from there way over to the antenna. That's what I'm measuring. I'm measuring the entire system. I'm not just measuring the antenna. These are really poorly named antenna analyzers. They are what you might call balance of system analyzers. You've got all sorts of metering for your radio, and then this is the rest of the system. You can't get on the air without an analyzer, without a coax and an antenna and stuff like that. And this measures all of that lumped together. Okay, that's very important to understand. This is not the SWR necessarily at the input to the antenna. You can measure it there, but you run into a problem. And here is the problem. If you're standing there at the base of the antenna trying to figure out what the SWR is, you're in the wrong place because you're going to affect the measurements. Uh, what I did when we tried to get the HF9V tuned was my wife and I got on her cell phones and she was in here measuring. I would make a tweak and then step 30 or 40 or 50 feet away. And then she'd tell me the measurement and I'd go back and make a small change. And that's what you've got to do in a case like this. And there, that's where this little tone comes in handy if you want to know if you're getting close or not. That's a lot of information. I hope it's helpful information. These are available from multiple vendors, and you saw the one I used, and uh, we'll put a link to that in the description, okay? And I'm going to put a link in there such that it costs the same price to you. It doesn't affect your price any, but it does put a little tiny piece of that into channel funds. So. If you would please subscribe, I'd really appreciate that because a lot, about two thirds of the people who view these videos are not subscribed. If you subscribe, it's just a technicality that tells YouTube, you put your stamp of approval on this uh, channel. Now, if you also click notify, it will send you a notification through whatever your favorite notification means is that I've put up a new video. And if you want to support this channel, you really like it, go to decastler.com support and pick a way that works for you. I'm kind of pushing Patron right now because they have the best user interface for people who want to throw in a little bit to the channel funds. Until we next meet, 73.